The goal of stratigraphy is to correlate rocks uh, across space and time. And there are a number of different scientific questions that can be addressed by different stratigraphic techniques. And so I'm going to talk in this video a little bit about different methods of correlation as an introduction to uh, stratigraphy. So if you remember, strata uh, are layers in, in rocks, in sedimentary rocks. And so stratigraphy is how you actually use those layers and correlate across them. So one of the easiest ways to do it is to use lithology, uh, rock type. So lithostratigraphy is correlating rocks of the same type from one area to another. This is really the easiest type of stratigraphy to do because you can actually observe the rock types directly in the field. And so if I saw a red sandstone in California and I saw a red sandstone in Nevada, um, I could correlate them if they have the same lithology. This is uh, particularly useful if you actually want to study um, aquifers, for example. There are certain types of rocks that are very good for that, um, and they're good for it because they have the same uh, lithology. However, just because the rock has the same lithology doesn't mean that it was deposited in at the same time or is even related to each other. So for example, red stone, sandstone in California isn't necessarily genetically related to the red sandstone in Nevada. They could have formed from completely different processes. A lot of times the questions stratigraphers are asking about the rocks are related to time, uh, which is chrono stratigraphy. And this is basically trying to correlate rocks that formed at the same time. Okay. This is much harder to do because we can't actually observe time in rocks in most cases. There are some uh, really nice techniques we can use that we'll talk in great deal about it, um, in, in later videos and at the end of the quarter. Um, one of them that we will use right now is, or is an event. So for example, a volcanic eruption. That if it produces ash that gets preserved in the sedimentary record, and we can correlate that ash bed across places, then that gives us sort of a, a moment in time. Other events could be something like a meteorite impact, uh, tsunamis that affect an area, um, things like that. So uh, event stratigraphy is a subset of chronostratigraphy. Um, we also have uh, uh, biology and evolution. Right, um, so we can use the, the distribution of fossils uh, as another form of subset of chronostratigraphy, of biostratigraphy. The Earth's magnetic field changes um, and when it reverses direction that happens across Earth um, nearly sim geologically simultaneously. So magnetostratigraphy is another subset of chronostratigraphy. And then we can also use sea, sea level changes uh, which are really useful, and um, we actually call this sequence stratigraphy. Right. And, and this is one of the most powerful tools for, for correlating uh, environments through time. It uses Walther's Law um, and concepts of stratigraphy to be able to reconstruct large parts of, of Earth history. Okay. So um, on the next uh, set of videos, I'm going to describe some of the, and demonstrate some of the differences between lithostratigraphy and chronostratigraphy. Thanks for watching.